God. I'm brighter than my future. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome to a movie review. I don't do movie reviews, do I? Now I do. <laughs> Today we are talking about Cold Skin, which I watched on Shudder last night. Um, or night before. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to be uploading this. Um, if this is Sunday, I watched it on Friday. If this is Saturday, I watched it yesterday. Whatever. But, uh, I, I wanted to watch this because Adam Cesar, um, if you don't follow him on YouTube, you need to. I would give him a shout out, um, in like a shout out Saturday thing, but he has more subscribers than I do because he's all around better quality content than me, so hop over. He does a, stay, a black t-shirt project. He reviews movies. He does Shudder reviews, all that stuff. This is how I originally heard about the film. I tried Shudder a long time ago when they first started, and their selection was was really bad. Um, now, I am happy to say I did a free trial, and I was able to find some really, really good content, um, and I hope to have enough content to do a series of movie reviews for horror movies that I haven't seen yet. One of the reasons why is because it's a sh th this movie in particular is a Shudder exclusive. Um, I was very impressed with the visual style of the film. It's a very pretty film to look at. Um, the special effects were great. I enjoyed it. Um, a lot of practical effects where other filmmakers might have used CGI. There is CGI in the film. There's some really bad CGI at the beginning. If you can get past the boat scene at the beginning with the dolphins, you'll be all right. If you don't notice anything, then you'll be fine. Um, but like blood splatter, things like that, they use actual blood instead of CGI blood, which never looks right. Um, and that's, whenever CGI blends in, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But when you can look at something and go, yeah, that's CGI, I, that's when I have a problem with it. Um, and there were some scenes in this movie that I looked at, especially like the creatures moving around. Definitely CGI. It looked like way back Lord of the Rings, some of the animations for walking didn't look right. They were stiff and mechanical and whatnot. Um, one thing I will say, the, 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 I, I'm not exactly sure where, what point the, uh, the, the movie was trying to make with one line in particular. Uh, I don't want to go into spoiler territory, but there's one thing that, that says, uh, Darwin was wrong. Um, and then the book goes on to prove that Darwin was possibly right. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused there. Uh, I don't know where that, that thought process came into. Uh, there's a lot of quotation, um, in the, in the movie, the, the act, the, the main two actors, really, really the only two actors in the film. I mean, there's a couple more, but they don't really matter in the overall grand scheme of things. Um that they just keep spouting off that I, first off, I knew it was quotation because it was either written in poetic verse or it was poetry, you know, it didn't sound like dialogue. It sounded like they were reading off of, you know, uh, not lyrics, but like they were reading a poem um, is what it sounded like. And I, I don't know where most of that comes from. The movie opens up with a Nietzsche uh, quote, the old, the old, old one, the most famous one from him, which is, you look into the abyss, the abyss looks back, whatever. Um, but it starts, you know, if one is to fight monsters, one should make sure that you do not become a monster. If you look into the abyss long enough, the abyss looks back. And that kind of spoiled the ending for me. That kind of spoiled the entire film. Now, the film is still watchable and fun. Um, it is slow for as much action as there is. Uh, the action is rather stylized and can be, at times, silly. Um, I did enjoy the film. I never once wanted to turn it off. And one of the main reasons for that is the aesthetic. The cinematography of this movie is amazing. Even if the writing is a little muddled, um, a little... I, I, I want to say pretentious. Pretentious gets thrown around a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, with people like David Foster Wallace, when you call David Foster Wallace uh, a pretentious is just silly because the man was an actual genius. Um, or it's like calling Einstein pretentious. Pretension is faking, you know, being smart. And that's what this movie felt like to me. This movie felt like it was trying to be smart, a smart horror movie, 
Um, and the only thing smart about it, really, I thought, were the visuals. Um, the way that, that, that everything was framed, the action. There is only one jump scare in the movie, and it, it, didn't, it didn't scare me, didn't catch me off guard or anything. I saw it coming, they build it up. It's right, it's right toward the beginning of the movie. Which is another thing that shocked me, is how quickly they show the monsters in this movie. Um, I would say it's within the first 15 minutes. I may be wrong, um, but I was actually surprised. And there's a reason for that, because there's another reveal about the monsters right after that. So, overall, I enjoyed this um, enough to keep on watching. It's an hour and 46 minutes long, and it feels like an hour and 46 minutes. It doesn't feel shorter. It doesn't feel longer. It feels about that length. Um, like your average horror movie, kind of like A Quiet Place and that kind of thing. There's as much going on, there's enough going on to keep your interest, but there are times when I thought, okay, something has to happen, and about that time, something did happen. Um, another minor complaint is the action does get a little bit repetitive. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything else bad to say about it. Um, I try to, I, I'm trying to point out as much of the negative as possible, um, just because that's what I do. Um, I will, I will talk about the negative aspects of a piece of art more than, than because that's what I latch onto when I watch something. But I did enjoy the flick. Um, I noticed some things were wrong or that didn't fit right, didn't gel with me. But overall, I had a good time, so I'm going to give it 3 out of 5 stars, or 5 out of 10 stars, however you want to do it. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been a movie review, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye! I'm not very good at movie reviewing. <laughs> so here I am, right? Um, that was, that was fun though? I don't know. It's new. Just let me know down there in the comments whether or not, um, you know, whether or not you like this kind of thing. And uh, we're going to get into spoilers here, so I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds to click away and to not be blinded by the light anymore. <laughs> so now spoilers, we're going to move on to spoilers. Um, if you don't want spoilers for Cold Skin, I suggest you go away. <laughs> Miss you. Uh, but, okay, so the spoiler I want to talk about is this movie made me legitimately uncomfortable. Um, and I did not want to talk about it in the main thread or the main part of this video, but them fucking the fish woman, that that got to me. Like, that honestly bothered me. Um, bestiality, uh, I guess in this one you could say it was okay because, you know, she, because she was part human, but it wasn't really, it wasn't even okay for, like, one of them was straight up raping her. And the other one, it's kind of alluded to because she gives him the, the sexy eyes. I'm, I'm sorry, this... <laughs> It it bothered me, y'all. But she gives it, he gets butt naked in in the in the pond or the the little water pool, and she's already swimming around, and she's kind of like, mm, come and get me, big boy. And he's like, all right. So he strips down, and he goes in there, and then they cut away, and they have a uh, Pervo dude over here watching, I guess Pervo dude part two. <laughs> and the entire rest of the movie, I'm like, he's gonna kill you because you fucking his fish. <laughs> So that that, that I was like, but that made me I like being I like being made to feel uncomfortable. So I enjoyed that aspect of the film, and that's another reason why you know I got I gave it as many stars as I did. But I also I probably would have given it a two. Um, and overall, like I said, it's okay. It's a it's an okay movie. So I mean, if we're going by Goodreads standards, two stars is is okay, but three is you know a good flick, a, a good book, good flick, whatever. Um, so I did enjoy it, but that one thing, that one part, like, when he's, when he's hunching on Fish Lady, I just, I couldn't, I was like, I literally had to look away, because I was like, no, no, I, and I knew it was coming, I, I knew it, because they, they got a very pretty woman to play Fish Woman, <laughs> and even though they, they drenched her, and not drenched her, but covered her in makeup and a bodysuit and all that stuff, you could still see her attributes, because, uh, uh, I have Shudder on Amazon Prime, and they have uh, IMDb X-Ray, and every time I touch the screen, her picture, and she'd be on camera, her picture would pop up, and I'm like, yeah, I can, I can see that, so it's a very pretty lady. They did it on purpose, because they, do, they wanted you to be able to look at that fish woman and be like, okay, I can see why I'd, you know, be hunching on a fish woman. I, I don't, I don't get it. Maybe you get it, but it 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 bothered me. Like I am the type of dude that I would have gone after the other dude before I went after the fish woman. Bye.